And now, with round-the-clock updates from Reuters journalists, here are today's top stories. Another crisis over the Trump campaign's contact with Russia. Building a massive border wall on a shoestring budget. The fairy tale ends for those blamed for the best pitcher screw-up. This is Reuters Now. Democrats on Thursday calling for the resignation of U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions after the Washington Post reported that during the 2016 election, the then senator met with Russia's ambassador to the United States two times. Encounters he did not disclose when questioned about possible contact between President Trump's campaign and the Kremlin during his confirmation hearing to become attorney general in January. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi now leading the calls for Sessions to resign. The Post reports that one of the meetings took place in September in the senator's office at the height of what U.S. intelligence officials say was a Russian cyber campaign to disrupt the American presidential election. Trump fired his first national security advisor, Michael Flynn, last month after he discussed U.S. sanctions on Russia before the new administration was sworn in and misled Vice President Mike Pence about the conversations. As Attorney General Sessions oversees the Justice Department, including the FBI, which has been leading the investigations into Russian meddling. His spokeswoman posting a statement on Twitter saying the allegations were false and that Sessions had never discussed campaign details with Russian officials. The Russian embassy to the U.S. on Thursday shrugging off the report, saying it was in regular contact with, quote, U.S. partners. The top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee now saying that the minority and majority on the panel have reached a written agreement to investigate the allegations of Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? Senator Franken, I'm not aware of uh, any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did have, not have communications with the Russians, um, and I'm unable to comment on it. One of his first acts is U.S. President Donald Trump ordering the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to begin immediate construction of a wall along the U.S. border with Mexico, a pledge he repeated Tuesday night. We will soon begin the construction of a great, great wall along our southern border. But Congress has yet to authorize any new funding for that project, and so Trump ordered DHS to start construction with whatever money it already has. And after digging through the cushions of the couch, all the department came up with was loose change. Reuters Washington correspondent Julia Edwards Ainsley has the exclusive story. This is actually a very surprisingly small amount of money. It was only about $20 million that they were able to find within their existing programs to spend on wall construction, and really it won't even get them to construction. It will only get them into a prototype phase. If they were to take all of this money and put it toward construction tomorrow, it would only get them um, just a little over two miles of a fence and just about one and a half miles of a wall. It takes uh, about $17 million per mile for a wall and about $9.3 million per mile of fence. So $20 million does not go far in this vast landscape. Reuters previously reporting exclusively that DHS estimates the border wall would cost $21.6 billion, far more than the $12 billion Trump projected on the campaign trail or the $15 billion forecast by Republican leaders in Congress. Congressman Paul Ryan has said that he will uh, attach a border funding bill to the 2018 budget, but a lot of Republicans have said that they really worry about the cost, and clearly if DHS could only find money for $20 million out of what could be a $20 billion project. Congress is looking like it's on the hook for a lot of this project. Many Republicans saying they would vote against a budget that does not offset the cost of the wall with other cuts. There's another institution, the Fourth Estate, the Free Press, that if we undermine or destroy, we do it at our own peril. 
let me tell you, let me say something. Say something that someone like all of us has taken more than my fair share of hits from the press. I've been covered by the very best in the business and some of the worst. Some of you press guys are lousy, just like some senators are lousy, like doctors are lousy, lawyers are lousy. But it doesn't matter. We should never challenge the basic truth that an independent and free press is a fundamental element in functioning of our democracy. I know you hear a lot quoted about Thomas Jefferson these days, about how he argued with the press. I remind you what Thomas Jefferson said. He said, if it were left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without the government, I should not hesitate a moment to choose the latter. Breaking the mold with his manifesto, Emmanuel Macron is standing as an independent centrist in the French presidential race and is clearly trying his hardest to set himself apart from the traditionalists. We're proposing a complete radical transformation, a software change on many topics. And the movement established and a number of the elected officials present here reflect its variety and richness, for which I thank them, show that we are not in a classic period of French political life. What is happening is unheard of. What we are going to offer our fellow citizens is not to reform their lives, because that is not what they are waiting for. They're waiting for a radical transformation on many issues. The front runner taking aim at lawmakers, promising to root out inequalities in the French pension system, determined to cut parliamentary seats by a third, and eager to sell down government stakes in some companies, using the money raised to fund industry and innovation projects. Macron had faced accusations that he had so far remained vague about his presidential plans. Now his proposed reforms likely to provoke a heated debate. As things stand, the 39-year-old former economy minister is currently tipped to defeat far-right leader Marine Le Pen in a runoff vote in May. Marine Le Pen has lost her EU parliamentary immunity. European Union lawmakers have lifted the exemption which shielded the French presidential candidate from prosecution. The leader of France's far-right Front National is under investigation in France for posting three graphic images of Islamic State executions on Twitter in December 2015. The vote passed on Thursday by a large show of hands in the plenary of the EU Parliament confirming a preliminary decision taken on Tuesday by the Legal Affairs Committee of the EU Legislature. The offence being considered is publishing violent images. That can carry a penalty of three years in prison and a fine of €75,000. One of the more eye-catching technologies on display at Mobile World Congress, this smartphone iris scanner works by examining 240 unique features of a human eye. Just imagine how your eye reacts to light, so your pupil opens and closes and your eye glazes over, you have specularities, you have water on your eyes, you have blood vessels in your eyes. So there's many, many signals that allow us to get that sense that we have a real person there. A photo of an eye gets rejected and its owner must be living and breathing. Iris scanners are considered more secure than fingerprint sensors, and both Apple and Samsung have hinted their next flagship devices will include them. The firm behind this technology says it's safe enough for banking. But to get the full phone experience, do consumers need to close their eyes to security risks? Location trackers, public Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections can come at a cost. When you're on those access points, if they're open, that means that they're open for everybody. It's so not only you to do your business, but for everybody else who wants to join that access point and listen in. Equipment to do that can be legally bought online. It can show who is where and when, and what they're doing. So I've got some of their device IDs, I've got their location in space, where they were at the time, and so now I can start making a bit of a picture of you know, who some of these people are, what devices they're carrying, and where they are moving. Targeted advertising works in the same way, but the message here is for users to beware. Others could be targeting you too. The two accountants blamed for one of the biggest and most embarrassing moments in Oscar history have been officially declared unfit for duty. Brian Cullinan and Martha Ruitz, partners at accounting firm Price Waterhouse Coopers, are now barred from helping out with Oscar votes 
and from handing out envelopes containing the winning names. A mix-up of those all-important cars caused a massive blunder on Sunday night, as La La Land was incorrectly named Best Picture. The cast and producers were halfway through their acceptance speeches before the mistake emerged and Moonlight crowned instead. For 83 years, PwC has overseen balloting for the Academy Awards, Hollywood's highest honours. The firm took full responsibility for the blunder, widely blamed on backstage distractions. Cullinan was found to have posted a photo of actress Emma Stone on Twitter just minutes before the mistake. That tweet now deleted. You're up to date. For more, download the Reuters TV app on your mobile or streaming device.